Welcome to Media Minute. For this edition, we're going to be talking about some bands that you might not have heard of. We'll be back right after this. Welcome to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Raskowski. And I'm Rachel Edge. And uh, on this episode, we're going to be talking about uh, music. Before we get into that, just want to remind you, like, subscribe, ring the bell, do whatever you got to do. Uh, apparently, there's some issues on people getting notifications about the episode. So we want you to be notified. So do everything you got to do. Yeah, smash it. Smash it. Definitely s- smash whatever you got to smash. Because I, yeah, I, I had, yeah. did not get a notification for our last episode. No. That's been like I didn't either. two weeks. Yeah, even Smash Mouth. <laughs> no i don't even know where to go from there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> apparently like shrek's like 25 years old now actually did you guys know yeah, they're doing so. another Shre- like shrek movie like shrek 5 or something oh, another why? shrek yeah it's like a standalone or something mike myers needs a paycheck yeah, well if he wasn't such a douche alleged <laughs> yeah <laughs> allegedly yeah well, yeah, well, let's, well, so uh, we're starting off with some slander. You're so, yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> why not? <laughs> I'm sure Mike Myers is watching. Oh, yeah, um, and he's going to be mad. Yeah, before we get into our main topic, uh, just a couple of things that uh, we've seen or watched or whatever. Uh, I, I watched the new Mortal Kombat movie. Oh, did How you? How was it? Uh, it was okay. It was... <laughs> an enthusiastic was, okay? Yeah, an enthusiastic okay. I mean, it's 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 a Mortal Kombat movie, so <laughs> you're not going into it expecting high art uh, or anything like that. Yeah, I'm not expecting eight and a half <laughs> <No>. <laughs> when I go to Mortal Kombat. Not, not expecting it to cover, like, any deep-seated themes or uh, anything like that. It was fun. It was a fun yeah. movie, uh, and I enjoyed watching that. So it succeeded in a movie, you know. Good. Um it kind of had its ups and downs. Uh, the guy who played Kano was uh, yeah. I heard he was a he was fantastic. Kind of the star of the like show. yeah, he he stole the show basically. Yeah. And uh, the final fight at the end uh, hit me but hit me with the member berries. Uh, how so? How so? I I don't want to spoil it. Like I'll, I'll spoil it if I spoiler alert. Yeah. Um, Three, two, one. Scorpion shows up and the classic Mortal Kombat music kicks in. Oh, it does. Like nice. right at the end and. Scorpion nice. fights Sub Zero. I was like, "Yes, <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm here for." <laughs> this is what I'm here for. <laughs> uh, Downside, they they made like an original character for the movie, and he was yeah, just kind of he's kind of meh to me. Oh, uh, because it's just some dude, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's just like some guy who was like an MMA fighter, and then he has like this strange tattoo or whatever. Mm. Um, yeah, <laughs> I. I, I don't know if like much was added by bringing him in. Like I would, yeah. I would prefer if they had Johnny Cage in the movie. Johnny Cage was missing. Yeah, I heard there was a lot of uh, upset about that. Yeah, they sure. they do have him teased uh, for the next movie. Uh, oh, they're already planning another movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I haven't even seen oh. it, and that's all I've heard. It's like, oh, we're yeah. waiting on number two. We're waiting on number two. Yeah, but. Uh, well, I was sorry. I was just going to say, apparently, like, uh, from some of the behind the scenes stuff I've seen, they actually had to ask the guy who played uh, Sub-Zero to slow down because he's an actual martial art artist. And so he was going and he was going at a speed that you would regularly go. And they're like, the cameras are not picking this up. You need to slow it down. Yeah. And it was the same thing with uh, Scorp- uh, not Scorpion. Who's the other guy? Or no, it was yeah, Scorpion. Scorpion wasn't yeah. It? Yeah, sorry. So, yeah, same thing with Scorpion, too. Like, because since they know the actual martial arts, they actually had to tell them, like, you need to slow down. The cameras can't pick this up at the speed that you're going. Yeah, that happens a lot in, like, uh, like Hong Kong action flicks. Uh, yeah, that they have to crazy. actually slow things down because they're they're too quick. Remember Jet yeah. Li? Jet Li, yeah. What happened to yeah. him? I'm not sure. He just kind of... Yeah. Had, the had, last, the last movie I saw him in was that, um, what was it? Like, Forbidden Kingdom? It was like him and Jackie Chan. Oh, yeah. 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 I yeah. vaguely remember that. Yeah. I, I don't think I saw yeah. that. Yeah. Not a yeah, lot of the only- mar- like martial arts films have kind of fallen off the radar again. Uh, it c- comes in like yeah. peaks, peaks and valleys. Like, I mean, we definitely have a one martial arts movie to talk about today. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Uh, <laughs> martial arts, a- Aliens, and Nick Cage. Which on paper sounds fantastic. It's, it sounds fantastic, sounds but... You you folks have seen it. I I haven't. <laughs> Tell me about it. 
Uh, it's terrible. Wants, Don't yeah, waste your time. Who wants to go first? <laughs> yeah, what's the name of it, first of all? Uh, Jiu Jitsu. Jiu Jitsu. It's on Netflix. Okay. Yeah. Nicolas Cage. Um, Tony Jaw is in it. So, yeah. P- yeah. Points there. For Tony J. Not, yeah. t- not Tony J, the voiceover guy. Tony, no. Tony J. Yeah. 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 You get jaw points. You get jaw points. Yeah. But, like, but, my God, it was bad. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, watching it, like, because. It, like Nick Cage, like I'll watch anything with Nick Cage in it. I don't care. Like you, you know what you're getting with a Nick Cage movie. Either it's going to be fantastic or the absolute worst thing you've seen. Yeah, that's why you're there. Yeah. Yeah, but even with the bad ones, though, they're still kind of like they're so bad they're good. This one was just so bad you felt like you wasted time. You're never going to get back. Yeah, it, I like, take I take it it wasn't even entertaining. Not I mean, really. to be fair, like, I think they took a lot of risks with the cinematography, yeah. and I I appreciated that. There were certain shots I was like, oh, that's really cool. Like, you never really see that. But other than that, like, even, like, the alien was a total ripoff of Predator. Oh, yeah. Like, you could see it. And it's it was kind of ridiculous. I was like, really? Like, you couldn't come with an original idea, so you had to steal this? Or, like, not steal, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, draw so much influence from it. It was just, I don't know. It, I was pretty disappointed. No, the cinematography, for the most part, was... No, not great. Well, they did this weird thing where it was just like a normal kind of like bad action movie, and then all of a sudden out of nowhere they switched to like a first person like hardcore Henry okay view during a fight scene. It's it's really off putting, and just oh no. And comparing the alien to the predator, hey, it, it, don't don't do don't do predator like that. Yeah. Predator no, I'm not. Blam- I'm not blaming Predator. What I'm saying is like it's kind of sad that they were like they couldn't come up with an original concept, so they were just like, oh, let's just do Predator, but he has ninja stars. Like it just, what? It just looked like a bad guy from Mass Effect. Oh boy. Kind of yeah. Oh boy. But the dialogue and- was insane. Yeah. Oh, like, it was like, terrible. Oh my god. There's one part where he's talking about he's hungry and he wants a noodle or a pickle. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm not sure like, what that's honestly- about. The only redeeming quality of this movie was Nick Cage. Like, if they didn't have Nick Cage in here, I don't think they would actually have a good movie. Or well, have they don't a have movie. a good movie. <laughs> yeah. No, but and, you know what I mean. And Tony Jaa. Let's not forget about Tony Jaa. No, him as well. But, like, for me personally, the whole reason I went to watch it was because of Nick Cage. And I think and that's I was, probably the case for most people. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was, it was kind of a piss-off, too, because it was, like, in the trailer, it seemed like he was going to be more into the movie. But he really wasn't. Like, he was kind of just... He showed up and, like halfway through the movie because you were like i know i was sitting there kind of like okay where is he like he was in the trailer like he should be in here and then like you see him and it was just like really like that's that's it that's it yeah yeah he didn't show up he wasn't even in the, in the first hour of the movie yeah. okay he was in no. the first he was in the opening scene yeah. but then he just kind of vanished they, they had enough money to hire yeah. him for like two days actually it was three three okay yeah yeah, that yeah. Was, so what one of those situations yeah apparently it was they only had him for three days so yeah. they had to probably just rush him around and was like, all right, shoot this, shoot this. And then it's like a Roger Corman movie where they just have like enough money to bring like in a name star for two days. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Funny part is the, the role Nick Cage played in that movie. It was uh, supposed to go to, well, it was intended for Bruce Willis. Yeah. Was it actually? I didn't know that. Yeah. Huh. But both Nick and Bruce have had a, a couple of rough years, I think. Yeah. They kind of just take whatever roles on yeah. the table. Yeah. Which, I mean, if you, you got to make a living. But on the positive side, if you are looking for something just to, like, play in the background, you can do that and do other stuff on the side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But apparently uh, Nick Cage in that movie cost... His wage was 20% of the entire film's, like, budget. Oh, geez. Well, the film's budget, I think, was $25 million U.S. Yeah. They only need $90,000 back. Oh. Ouch. I don't know. Well, if it's on Netflix, they got cash for that, I'm sure. I would think. Yeah. I would hope so, because, like, whoever invested in that movie, like, I'm sorry, dude, you made a bad investment. Yeah. Well, the director's made a bunch of, like, movies exactly like that. It's just like... Oh, really? Yeah. He just hires a bunch of fighters, and they just kick the crap out of each other, and the plot's kind of secondary. Yeah. Which is unfortunate, because, again, Nicolas Cage, Aliens, Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah. On Sh- paper. Should work. That's a slam dunk. Yeah. It should be. But, uh... Like, all, all of the elements were there. It was just... It was like somebody left it for too long and it went rotten. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But, actually, uh, bonus points. As a... <laughs> Sorry. Squid, sorry. Itchy nose. Itchy nose. <laughs> we're leaving that in. Yep. That's staying in. But uh, they... 
Extra points for uh, using the Wilhelm scream. Oh, they used the yeah. Wilhelm scream? They did. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, the, go there's one good that. thing. Yeah. Excellent. That's all I got for that movie. <laughs> yeah, I got it's nothing bad. else. I mean, well, like, it's not, it's not, I really wish, I was kind of hoping it would get so bad it became good. Yeah. Yeah. Like The Room or Troll 2 kind of levels. No, it didn't yeah. happen. Yeah. yeah. No, it didn't. That's it, a like, fun it had, line. Yeah. It had potential, though. Yeah. Swing and a miss, oh, I guess. Well. well, if you want yeah. something to well, watch, something that's good, um, I've mentioned a couple times that I've been watching through Invincible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that Robert Kirkman uh, animated uh, show. And, uh, yeah, finished the first season finished up uh, yesterday. Nice. And, uh, yeah, it's worth watch. Thumbs worth, up. It's worth watching. It's a, I like it's a it. superhero show with a twist. Gets the, Ooh. Yeah. the forward stamp of approval? It does. Nice. It does. I like it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's on Amazon Prime. If you have Amazon Prime, watch it. There's no reason not to. Don't be afraid because it's animated. Animation is not just for children. Absolutely. Hasn't been for a long time. Yeah. Has not. Has I kind of love that they're doing that, though. Like, I think they realize that animation, it doesn't have to be, like, kind of pulled into just, oh, it's family. It's like, there's yeah. so many animated movies now that are that have come out, or and TV shows that, like, are more for a mature audience, and I think it's a really cool way to do it. Yeah. And you can do some stuff in that medium that you can't do, like, live action and, and make it oh, look good. Sure. Shout out for to sure. the Cat. <laughs> that's like the OG North American animation that's uh, spicy. Yeah, Fritz the Cat. Yeah, very spicy. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if I've seen anything else. Um, if you want like a fantasy show, uh, Shadow and Bone uh, kicked off on Netflix. I think that's what it's called, Shadow and Bone. It's pretty good. Oh, I've seen like the thumbnail for it. It looked really good. Yeah. What's it about? Uh, it's kind of this fantasy thing there's like two kingdoms that are separated by this like giant shadow wall and if you go through the shadow wall there's monsters that will eat you so cool yeah i like it happens yeah it's pretty pretty good uh, i've only seen like the first couple episodes but i liked it if you're looking for something kind of maybe to fill that game of thrones niche uh it, it you know it's not super political or anything but yeah you know cool. oh actually uh last night i checked out I've been sleeping on this one. Uh, Ozark. Yes. Yeah, I've seen seen Ozark. Really good. Yeah, it is. I I am late to the party on that one. Yeah, that came out a few years ago. Right? Yeah, I think it's the, done yeah. now, actually. I've yeah, I think it. it's it's yeah. like the entire series is finished now. But yeah. I know there's at least three seasons. At least that's what yeah. Netflix yeah. tells me. Jason Bateman, right? Yeah. 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 Really, really I'm, a good I'm, show. Apparently, Jason Bateman like directed and wrote this, too. Like, he's not really? just an actor in this one. Yeah, apparently he yeah. did like the whole shebang. Okay. Yep. It's a lot of a lot of underworld stuff. Laundering money. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah, really good show. I I am sorry I was late to that. Yeah. That's the great thing though about like streaming. If you miss something, it's still there. Yeah. Like it's not like it's growing up and t- watching TV in the nineties where like uh, if you old appointment television. Yeah. If you if you missed out on something or you didn't catch the first season or something, like it's it's just there. Yeah. Yeah. So Ozark, uh, if you haven't seen it, yep. catch up. Recommend. I'm doing it. Recommend. And it is a really good show. Yep. All right. Uh, I guess we'll get into the main topic for the episode. We're doing this, hey? Yeah. First time. For, kind for, of. Yeah. For uh, talking about music. Talking about music. We, yeah, we've, we've kind of not hit on music very much for... Like, music is media. Yeah. So we'll it give is. it a minute, at least. <laughs> or an hour. <laughs> or an hour. <laughs> or however long we go off into the weeds talking about unrelated things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who wants to start this one? I can, I, I can go first. Then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the topic is like bands. Oh, yeah. We should probably yeah, tell them what <laughs> we're talking about. Uh, we're, we're recommending bands that you may not have heard of. Yes. Yes. Well, uh, oh, what's that Aladdin reference? Uh, something in the sand? Diamond oh, in the rough. Diamond, yeah, thank you. Diamond there you go. in the rough. Yeah, but we're... We found a few of those. Yeah. I need a bigger notebook. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Once we get the MeUndies sponsor, we'll get yeah. you a bigger notebook. Me- MeUndies, I, got, I, got, I, got, I need a bigger <laughs> notebook. Help us out. Help me out. Um, okay. Uh, my first one is, it's a duo. Yep. Husband and Ooh. wife. Oh, I know who it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, went, that didn't take long. Uh, shovels <laughs> and Rope. Ah, uh, yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're... Music style is um, 
very southern yep. inspired, like bluegrass, uh, blues, country, even some jazz. Yeah. Basically anywhere around like anywhere from about a. Uh, Say Kentucky, Tennessee, yeah. all the way down to Texas, Appalachia, and f- yeah. yeah, that kind of stuff. Um, I would go as far to say, and I might get in trouble for this, but they're kind of like a modern day Johnny Cash and June Carter. Yeah, yeah, that's a perfect description of them for yep. sure. Like, their voices meld together so well. They do. They have excellent harmonies. Yeah, they're, they're they do. Crush it. Um, that's what I got. That's yeah. That's that's really all I have to say. They're amazing. Uh, if, if you're into like a Oh, yeah, they they kind of run the gamut. Yeah, modern folk music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good yeah. description. Yeah, modern folk kind of bluegrass kind of. Yeah, thing. yeah. Great songs. They've been around for well, oof, probably twenty years. Yeah, maybe not as a band together. They had solo projects, which are equally great. Uh, Michael Trent and Carrie Ann Hurst. Nice are obviously their names, and uh, I don't know how they're not as popular here as they are in their hometown yeah i, I wish we could like throw clips on like uh, right yeah like, but I mean, uh yeah we can't because of the the youtubes yeah we'll get yep. in, we'll get in trouble yeah but uh yeah google shovels and rope you'll find some good stuff yeah it's also For an sure. awesome name like yeah right it's, it's like yeah. shovels and rope. what is that like it's <laughs> it sounds like someone's getting buried yeah or, or hung yeah. Yeah, like it's, <laughs> or hung and buried at the same time because their, their first Ooh. album was actually called shovels and rope and it was just uh, Carrie Ann Hurst and Michael Trent. Yeah. Like, The Shovels and Rope was the name of their first album, and then I guess they just kind of like, oh, you know what, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Let's do that. I like it. Yeah. So, um, I have really no closing statements to yeah. wrap this up. It, 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 it's kind of hard just to, I guess that's maybe why we don't talk about music so much. It's kind of, like, without being able to reference it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit hard, but, and we'll do our best anyway. Oh, I should have just brought in my guitar. Yeah. Let's play, <laughs> play, let's play the song. I think that's allowed. Yeah. Um, well, I, I guess I'll go next. Uh, my band is a uh, power metal band out of Victoria, BC oh, called uh, Unleash the Ooh. Archers. Uh, Ooh. I found out about these guys because, like, I have this uh, kind of rule that if there is a song out there that has been written, if you search for that song plus metal on <laughs> YouTube, you will find a metal cover of that Damn song. right. I believe it. Yeah. So I've like, never tried it, but yeah. I believe it. Uh, there was a uh, Canadian classic folk artist called uh, Stan Rogers. Uh, and uh, I searched for one of his songs plus metal. And uh, yeah, I found that these guys had, <laughs> had did like an awesome that. cover of it. Um, they done uh, five studio albums so far. It's a female vocalist. Uh, her name is Brittany Hayes, or she's known as, on stage, Brittany Slays. Nice. Yeah, hey! her metal band. Uh, I feel like that should be her uh, roller derby name. Yeah. She, yeah. Might, she might not roller skate. <laughs> I don't know her. But if, if, she, if she does, yeah. use that. Yeah, no, she's got an awesome, powerful voice. And they've actually been nominated for a Juno Award uh, nice. coming awesome. up in June. So they might be, like, metal band of the year for 2021. We don't know yet. Crazy. Yeah. That's when, when are the Junos? Uh, June. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I probably should have known that. If they were the Mayos, they'd uh, be all about sandwiches. <laughs> Actually, we should start a sandwich <laughs> award show called the Mayos. The Mayos. Yeah. <laughs> brought, I love that so brought, to you by our, uh, brought to you by our new sandwich store, uh, speaking of which. Yep. Which is yep. right across the road for that's a wrap. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's coming together, people. <laughs> we're making moves. Yeah, big moves, big moves. But yeah, uh, unleash the archers. Look them up. Excellent nice. stuff. Wait cool. Again. Yeah, Rachel. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I'm on camera. I, I'm here. Right. <laughs> I had a moment of just like, oh yeah, I'm just listening. Um, actually, the first artist I want to talk about, I've uh, like he's actually a friend of mine, and I've known him since high school. And uh, his DJ handle is called Robo Spider. Yes. And yeah, I think he's completely underrated. Like he has some really good beats and he's more of like a, um, oh man, how do I describe it? It's really hard to describe because he plays and like does just so much. And I, like, I don't know what it is, but like every time he puts out like a new single or a new album, it's just like, holy crap. Like he tries different things. He's very like creative in that sense. Like, I don't know what it is. Like his mind is completely just music based. Nice. <laughs> Where it's like he comes up with stuff and you hear it and you're like, oh my God, like this is incredible. So 
definitely check him out. He's on Spotify, and I'm pretty sure he's on YouTube as well and SoundCloud. And it's just Robo Spider. He has like a bunch of different EPs. My favorite one is Stardust, I think. Nice. For sure. I, I love the name as well, Robo Spider. Right? And he, yeah. If you, yeah. If you, I'm all about robots. Yeah, if you, tack, if you tack on in space. Yeah. So Robo Spider's in space. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure he actually has like a like a a space album or like a space single. I'll see if I could find it. And yeah, I'll, send I'll, it to ha- you. I'll have to check it out. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely check him out. Yeah. And he's uh he's based out of Red Deer too, so he's like in Alberta. So he's not only CanCon but Alberta. Nice. And I'm weird that way, so yeah, that's my first guy. <laughs> All right, Chris. I guess that's me. Yep. Number two. A uh, uh, totally different direction. She's a rapper singer kind of new on the scene she won the uh well not one but she was on the uh 2019 double xl freshman list okay i don't think she gets nearly enough exposure but uh tiara whack okay she's canadian no no That's... oh i thought you're saying she was my bad oh no i mean she might be but i, I don't think she is but yeah excellent choice on that yeah her last she's... album whack world was amazing oh my god yeah uh 15 tracks each one minute long all super catchy, an insane amount of creativity in here. It is a little weird. It's kind of oddball hip hop, but yeah, she's kind of hard to pin down, <laughs> which is kind of the point. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, Whack World by T R Whack. Check it out. I mean, come on, you got 15 minutes to spare in a day. For sure. But super catchy. I can't wait to see what she do- she does next. I I I'm a little bummed that her last up al- her last album wasn't longer. Yeah. It definitely, definitely leaves you wanting more. That's good, yes. though, I guess. So if you like a catchy kind of popish hip-hop with an experimental twist with a, a ton of really amazing ideas, check it out. Tierra Whack. Get on also, her, her music video for that yeah. was incredible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, we can't forget about the video. No, like, she did so many cool things in that. It was, it was insane. Like, it all linked. Like, obviously, the, like, the whole album linked together so well so it's like seeing like the entire album in one music video was just beautiful i loved it yeah 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 because yeah they, they did a, that's how they I since think, it's only 15 minutes yeah, they made a, an yeah. album long music video and yeah like rachel was saying the, the songs do like tie in together so well it, the flow you don't even really notice that the songs are changing i yeah. mean sometimes you do but it, it just oh it's what's your favorite just, one from black world i gotta know uh, I can't say the title because <laughs> it has, a, it has a, a word that would get us in trouble. A- F you. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm, pretty okay. Sure, I'm pretty sure we won't get in trouble. For no. That. Those no, are I just letters. You're... Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Tierra Wax. She's amazing. I can't wait. I, it, that, was, that album came out in 2018. Can you believe that? Well, I'm pretty sure she's released some singles since then. Because I've seen some new stuff from her. Yeah, I've been, I was hoping for an album by now. I was checking on Spotify and looking for like a full release, but no luck. To be nothing yet. To be, to be fair though, like COVID has put like a stop on so much stuff lately, and maybe yeah. she's used the year to like create something. You well, know what I mean? Hopefully, I mean Brock Brock Hampton got an album done last year. Yeah, they did. Well, I mean, it came out this year. But... Yeah. You oh. know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, my next pick is a uh, Scottish heavy metal band called Alestorm. Oh, they, they refer to bad. yeah, they oh, refer good. to themselves as uh, the true pirate Scottish metal band. Nice. So if you're looking <laughs> for like hardcore sea shanties with titles like Death Throes of the Terror Squid, <laughs> this band okay. might be for you. They you put have my out, attention. Yeah, they put out six albums so far. Uh, yeah, it's like um, metal folk. With like a pirate twist, that, that's, I love there you go. that. That's I don't know how else to uh, describe it. Um, you know, if, if you're a fan of metal, you probably like it. If you're a fan of pirates, <laughs> but uh, that's so yeah, cool. yeah, if you like the Scots, yeah, boom, there got, you go, got you covered. That, that's wicked. That's all I can say about them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I guess that's my turn. Uh, so another one. It's another guy I know. Uh, another DJ. Uh, he's known as Joy Kill. Now he's based out of Edmonton. And it's really cool because, again, like, I don't know how he comes up with the stuff that he does, but it's incredible. Um, He has, like, a cross-genre kind of vibe. So it's like he does, like, man, I don't know how to explain these. I think that's my problem. Yeah. But, like. You can't show clips. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough. 
yeah, but like honestly, like one of the most sincere guys I think I've met, and he's just so like passionate about his music and it comes through it's incredible actually he's doing um a live stream with a bunch of different artists from around alberta uh for charity so i'll definitely put the link and stuff in the description but definitely check him out he puts on a hell of a show and uh it's just a ton of fun what's the what's the charity um it's for actually let me see if i can find the poster hold on okay here we're gonna we'll, f- we'll fill the yeah we'll, we'll uh stall for you this yeah, is also so staying sorry. in I also just found it. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay. So, uh, basically, all the artists are like um, uh, indigenous, or, or they're trying to help indigenous uh, charities from oh. around like Alberta and stuff. So definitely a cool thing to check out. There you go. Nice. Shout out to uh, all that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, too long to repeat. So <laughs> just get a general shout out. Yeah. Can, <laughs> but can, yeah. You can scroll back in the video if you yeah. forget. <laughs> There's a pause button. Yeah. Oh, I guess that's me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we we could just continue staring at you if you want. Yeah, just. <laughs> In this episode, Chris sits there. Crap, I blinked. Okay. Back to business. Yep. Uh, I guess it's my last one already. Wow. We're flying through this one. Yeah. Uh, Australian singer-songwriter? Mel Gibson. Close. <laughs> Actually, no. Russell Crowe. Not close at all, but. Uh, Alex Cameron. Ah. Alex oh, Cameron. my God. Yeah. Um, amazing. Yep. i got to stop smacking my lips. It's driving me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Australian dude, singer-songwriter. He, uh, him and his buddy who plays saxophone, which you don't get a lot of that of anymore. No. So oh, no. Points there. Um, how would I, if, if you liked uh, The Killer's first album, you would like Alex Cameron. Okay. And actually, yeah. actually, Brandon Flowers kind of, I'm not sure to what extent uh, he involved, he was involved with uh, Alice Cameron's uh, albums, but uh, he's definitely in there. Okay. So there is a, an Mashing. Alice Cameron Killers, whatever, Co- the, whatever this is. Inter, inter, it's a know. mesh. They work together. They yeah. work, yeah. But yeah, no, it was really good. Um, I, oh, uh, what to say about Alice Cameron? <laughs> He's the best dancer you've ever seen. Yes. <laughs> Just okay. look up Alice Cameron. I'm gonna go. Uh, Run out of luck. Yeah, that's a good. That's a great one. Uh, Marlon Brando, another, yep. another great track. What was the video though? I'm I'm trying to remember because his videos are pretty fun too. Oh, they're amazing. Uh, All directed by his but, girlfriend. So yeah. Um. But no, the one video where his girlfriend dresses up as him and is like a weird like fan. Oh, that was the one with uh, Olsen. I can't, yeah, uh, I can't remember the name. Like Angel of... something? No, Angel Olsen was the... the uh, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> it's hard, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, just look up Forced Witness, Alex Cameron. It it is a bit of a weird kind of concept album. It basically the whole album is just about a internet creep. Yep. So some of the lyrics are a little uh, uh, yeah, yeah, alarming, imagine. but a little disturbing, yeah. But the songs are amazing. And like I've been listening to that for three, ever 3 years now. Nice. Alice Cameron. Check him out. You won't yep. be sorry. If if you like if you like the Killers. If you're into the Killers, at least the first album, it has it's a little more mellow than that. Like you're not getting somebody told me kind of songs, but uh, yeah, cool. Um, if that's kind of your vibe, if you were in the hot fuss, then check out uh, "Forced Witness" by Alice Cameron. You will not be disappointed. It's not at all. Amazing okay. album. Uh, my next pick, my last pick, I guess. Um, I, I went with heavy metal for like all three. Oh, you got a theme. They, they, cool. Yeah, because uh, nice. you know it's it's kind of a niche. Uh, it's a band called Windrose. They're uh, an Italian heavy metal band, and they do cool. uh, kind of epic fantasy heavy metal. So imagine that you took J.R.R. Tolkien and uh, made made like his stories like heavy metal based. <laughs> that sounds uh, incredible. Yeah, um, yeah. They actually like do like a couple like songs based on like Tolkien. Like uh, like they have one like King Under the Mountain like. 
the Misty Mountains, stuff like that. There, Floyd do that as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I, metal and like fantasy have always kind of had a little bit of like, yeah, a bit of a yeah. I don't even know what you'd call it, like a yeah a romance. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they have four studio albums, and uh, yeah, like I said, if if uh, kind of like the classic, I guess, metal, where like you know, if you want to hear about like uh, a dwarven kingdom underground and dragons and wizards. dragons and wizards and stuff like that, check out Windrose. Stuff like crystals. And yeah. So I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to look up a Japanese metal band that you just made me think of. Okay. <laughs> so uh, give me a second. Yeah, Rachel, we'll move on to you. Yeah, for sure. So I just realized, like, all of my people are <laughs> from Alberta. Yeah, that's fine. So, <laughs> actually, um, I almost, I just recently found out about this artist, and it was through Monica Hilton, actually. Um, I Since I do the radio show Canadian Roots, I like finding Canadian artists that many people may not know of, or, like, they hey, need to be uh, checked out. So. No, for sure. Uh, but, yeah, if it wasn't for Monica, I wouldn't have discovered this artist, and I'm very thankful for that. And that's uh, Kaylee Cardinal. Okay. She's an incredible artist she does like a lot of like acoustic folk and like um very sing songwriter kind of stuff but it's insane because her voice is just my god like you hear the power within it and it's just it's it's kind of mind-boggling actually um she actually has a 2022 release coming which i'm like super excited about and she actually won a juno award for, uh in 2020 nice for, for her stuff so she's really cool and i would definitely suggest checking her out and i actually found out some fun facts about her that i was surprised to hear um the cbc show uh in the stand or there's like a creative arts radio show that they do uh she's the first indigenous host on it so that's pretty cool nice and uh yeah she got indigenous artist of the year at the edmonton music awards and she's been nominated for like just like a surplus amount yeah. of uh, awards and stuff, right? So she's they, on the up I've, and up. Yeah, so I'm really glad people are like finding out about her and listening to her because my god, like her voice alone is just it's incredible. And then like you pair it with her lyrics and like the songs themselves, just beautiful. So definitely check her out if you're into like a singer songwriter kind of thing with a powerful vocal smash. Nice. I'll have to look her up. Definitely. Sounds like my kind of stuff. Cool. Chris, you you were looking up something. Did you find it? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, baby metal. Ba oh, yeah, baby metal. Yeah, yeah that's made me think of that. Yeah. Did, uh, just look did them you up. I'm not even going to explain baby metal. Just I'll did you know, save the surprise. Yeah. For uh, Sorry, that just, like, sparked something for me. Uh, Rob Zombie was uh, took a picture with a Japanese baby metal band. I don't know if that's the band. Yeah, I think, like, uh, I, think I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the metal community was giving them, like, such a hard time because they're like, oh, baby metal doesn't count as metal and, like, blah, 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 blah. Oh, and it's, yeah, like, I can see that. Yeah, and, it, and it's, like, he was replying to all of, like, the hate, like, comments. He's like, no, they're a band. They do metal. I respect them. And it was just, like, cool to see because it's, like, I think that's, like, something, like, in every kind of part of, like, music and stuff. Whereas, like, if it doesn't fit a certain, yeah. like, aspect of it, like, people are immediate to dismiss it, right? Nice. Yeah, you always get the uh, the uh, uh, the extremes, yeah. Pur Puritans. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a, a special mention, oh. uh, yeah. Glory Hammer, uh, and I think the the metal. vocalist for Glory Hammer is actually the same one for Ailstorm. But uh, cool. yeah, they do like uh, again, it, it's it's metal, but uh, it, it's kind of uh, it's got kind of a comedic touch to it. Like they have one song called like the Unicorn Invasion of Dundee. <laughs> and like, they have like a song about like uh, space uh, submarines fighting like an evil empire. So, I love that. So. All right. You should check out if you're into that. You should check out uh, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Ah, it's hard to say. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. There yeah. we go. Oh my god, that one. Yeah. No, yeah. don't so do it. Check, <laughs> no, no, absolutely check him out. Oh, is that the one with like the stupid long like ten twenty minute song or something? Uh, I remember you showing a, a me lot of metal songs are long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah anyway, you're gonna have to be more specific. No, yeah. like, like this one was really weird though. Like it was a really weird song, and it was just like the same thing over and over again. I remember you showing it to me, so I'm, I'm not sure. sure. About yeah. It. All right. Yeah, I got nothing here. Yeah. Not, not ringing any bells. 
Oh, I, I do have another one to mention. Uh, yeah. Jam Project. Uh, if you ever watch One Punch Man, they're the guys who did the oh, nice. music for that. Nice. And, uh, yeah, they have their roots kind of like in Japanese rock. Uh, oh, I love that. So uh, it's actually like a bunch of different artists that have, have come together to create this jam project. I just hit the mic. Um, but, yeah, uh, if you liked kind of the intro to One Punch Man, then they have a bunch of other things. Any music that makes me want to get a bunch of buddies together and just fight the sky yeah. during the credit, <laughs> the opening sequence, then, yeah, okay. I love it. Yeah. Well, if, if you guys don't mind, I do have one more artist. I had a really yeah. hard time narrowing it down to three. Yeah, so, go ahead. Um, this artist, um, rap, and um, another, another guy that I know, and he's, like, getting into the rap scene. He's been in it for a while, but he's coming out with a new album here soon, uh, Tef Z. Okay. He's uh, got some really good tunes uh his first album let me see if i can find the name of it here sorry i should have come more prepared i totally thought i was but i guess not but yeah his uh where are you there we go uh his first album the missing link wicked wicked beats wicked lyrics and it's just like a fun listen so i would definitely check him out as well nice cool yeah um has everyone covered their their music stuff yeah yeah i think so yeah uh, I just want to bring up, I watched Cocoon <laughs> earlier this week, and Cocoon Why? could be written, I don't know. I, I have these. The peanut butter back I, in the I have these urges to watch, like, these old movies that I haven't seen in, like, 30 years. That's fair. Yeah. But, man, Cocoon, it could be easily written as, like, a horror movie. I love that. <laughs> yes, yes, <it> could. <laughs> I kind of thought it was. Yeah. It's good. You got Steve Gutenberg. You got uh, Wilford Brimley. <laughs> Right. Powerhouses of the time. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, it's was, it was definitely interesting. It's uh, <laughs> if you don't know what Cocoon is, it's about there's these alien people, and uh, they put like these pods in a swimming pool, and these old people discover the swimming pool and makes them feel good. Yeah. And <laughs> it's an odd movie. It's kind of it, a yeah, wholesome I, invasion I, of the body. Sensors. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it, it could easily easily be like a a, a oh. horror film like, oh hell yeah so 100%. yeah you know um, <laughs> so could a uh, batteries not included yes yeah if anyone yeah. remembers that movie but was, yeah. alien robots just yeah it's one of those kind of wholesome films but could easily be yeah uh, that flight flight of the navigator have you ever seen flight of the navigator i love that movie that like that can be it's pretty dark like this alien abducts a kid for like 20 years and then drops him back yeah, it is. Kind and of he's still in the body way. body of a kid. Like it's it's really weird. That is weird. It was a strange movie. Yeah, but amazing. The the eighties were weird and dark times. Yeah, yeah everyone was coming coming down off drugs. Yeah, but like, they still had weird ideas. It's like the last unicorn. <laughs> like, have you ever seen that? <laughs> no, I don't think I have. Uh, I know that one. I think Jeff Bridges does the main voice for that, and Christopher Lee. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah who actually did his own voice in the German dub because he can speak German. Cool. Yeah. Uh, crazy, like, 80s animated thing, nice. though, with some weird visuals. There's a there's a tree with boobs <laughs> for some reason. Makes sense. And the uh, there's a harpy that will give you nightmares. Awesome. Lovely. Sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think it's incredible what you can do, like, with editing and stuff. It's like you can take a dark movie and make it funny, or you can do, like, a funny movie and make it a horror movie. I remember seeing <laughs> uh, somebody did, like, a fan-made trailer where they did uh, Harry Potter, and I think it was Goblet of Fire, but they made it a teen rom-com. Okay. And, oh, my God, is it funny. Like, it's actually crazy what you can do with a little bit of music and just some different editing choices. Oh, yeah, like, for watch, sure. Watch, yeah. Yeah, like, that's a whole genre kind of. Or yeah, some like genre if you go YouTube. on YouTube, I mean, you'll see, you'll see like Twilight. Yeah, there's a couple of those. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, the, the big thing, like music changes so much for like. It really does. Uh, when it, a, oh, there's one kind of famous one where uh, it's a uh, Ross from Friends talking yeah. about his like, missing sandwich, <laughs> but they removed the laugh track and it just makes him look nuts. Oh yeah. 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 Look that up. There's also uh, yeah. a series of uh, Garfield comics where they take away, like, what Garfield is thinking. So <laughs> it's just John talking to a cat, and it's incredibly depressing. It's like, oh, man. I, I remember being in film class, and it's like we were learning about, like, the importance of music in, like, in soundtracks in, like, uh, 
movies. And the craziest one that I always thought was Jaws, right? Yeah. So it's like you hear that theme music and you're like, oh my God, something's going to happen. And you kind of start panicking. You take that away though. And you're just like, not even phased. You're like, yeah, it's oh. Like, oh, it's a fish. Yep. All right, cool. And certainly so, like, music from like a Rob Schneider movie yeah. <laughs> into Jaws. And it's a completely different movie. Yeah. Absolutely. So, like, I, I think that's really cool that, like, how much power music has over, like, the way you feel about something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, I guess that wraps up our... Uh, not quite. No? What do you got? I have a... Uh, I don't know if you'd call it a... I think the issue uh, statement. Uh, oh, oh uh, yes, yes, uh, yeah. So, uh, two episodes ago, most people probably didn't see it because it was our bit shoot exclusive, which is actually doing really well yeah. compared to our other videos. I said it was impossible to build a case against LeVar Burton being the host of Jeopardy. But now? Turns out he heard what I said and just was just like, hold my beer. Let, <laughs> let me do it. Because <laughs> so, uh, I guess he went on The View and said some stuff that raised uh, quite a few eyebrows. Yeah, some stuff on like cancel culture and stuff. Yeah, like that, how right? it's accountability culture. Can uh, yeah. Cancel, uh, I, don't know. I, 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 tend, I don't get involved in internet outrage. It's pointless. But so uh, LeVar Burton proved me wrong. Yeah. So who wow. who would be your Jeopardy host? Nicholas Cage. Nick Cage? Yeah. That oh, would, my God. That would be something. Think about that. Yeah. That'd be wild. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry. Sorry, Burton. You blew Actually, it. forget. I'm going Nick Cage could, now. Uh, I, I would say another good option would be Neil deGrasse Dyson. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. I feel like he'd be good. I, I think he might have actually done like a guest episode already. I might be wrong about that. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, like I, I, I haven't watched that. Jeopardy in like 20 years. I do watch reruns yeah. on Netflix. Yeah. Oh, yeah? I do too. Yeah. Yeah. They, they have, <laughs> I actually didn't know it was on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It makes me, I, I like to watch Jeopardy to realize how dumb I am. <laughs> I'm actually really good at Jeopardy. Here. Yeah. And it kind of freaks me <laughs> And I don't know why. Like, it freaks me out. Like General trivia? Yeah. Yeah. Like, a, a topic will come up. Like, I don't know anything about that. Yeah. And I'll get, like, the whole column, like, okay, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't make sense. I don't know anything about quantum physics or minerals or movies from the 30s. Yeah. It turns out I you guess do. I do. Yeah. We got to get you on Jeopardy. I would love to be on Jeopardy. Yeah. I don't, That'd be cool. I don't know if Canadians are allowed on there. Uh, um, they did I'm not sure. Canadian editions or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. I forget. Hmm. Well, there you but, go. But, yeah, so uh, LeVar Burton... Me, me in saying that it was, I still think he would do a good, great job. Like I, I'm not, I'm not. Yeah. Counting him out. I'm just saying. He, he's all, a, I, all I'm trying to say is, when I said that you can't build a case against Levar Burton, you were wrong. I was wrong. Okay. Dead wrong. That's all. That's fair. Yep. I can own my mistakes. I was guess it wasn't really a mistake. <laughs> no, but <laughs> it's just that it, it, like it turned around so fast. It's kind of yeah. Funny. He, he kind of threw me under the bus. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's all I got on that. I just had to issue that statement <laughs> for uh, prosperity's sake. Yeah. Well, I, I guess okay. we'll wrap things up then. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for watching this edition of Media Minute. Like I said at the beginning, smash that like button. Do it. Uh, get the ring the bell for notifications as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we got to figure that out. Yeah. But uh, you know, if you don't get notified, just uh, keep an eye on the the Chat TV YouTube page, and yep. or or BitChute page. Don't forget BitChute. Yeah. Media Minute, all one word. Yep. We'd love to see you. Also, uh, if you have a comment, make sure you yeah leave it below. Actually, let us know if you're getting the notifications or not. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be cool. Cause yeah, or if you have a topic suggestion, something you'd like to see us cover. That's yeah. a good idea. Yeah, cool. Well, I'm Michael Forward. I'm the new host of Jeopardy. <laughs> I'm Rachel Edge. We'll see you next time.